Guardians, welcome to another episode of Destiny 2 Builds. Today, we're diving into the icy plains of Stasis Hunter with the Mask of Bacchus build. Showing off a build that will freeze every enemy in sight. With your weapon's surging power, prepare to witness your enemy's hopes and dreams shatter. This build excels at slowing and shattering enemies to continue cycling through your abilities. Shift at a moment's notice to start mowing through enemies with your weapons and repeat the cycle. From diving into seasonal content to running through waves of the new horde mode, this build has you covered. So strap in guardians as we unveil the ultimate stasis hunter build designed to dominate PVE content in Destiny 2. Remember to leave a like if you find this video helpful, and if you like seeing build videos and other Destiny 2 helpful content, consider hitting that subscribe button. With that being said, let's jump right on into it. First thing, let's be clear, this build isn't a solo build. It definitely excels in a team environment, though that's not necessarily a bad thing. Having this build in your back pocket for a raid or dungeon scenario is a good thing. Heck, even things like the coil really show off how strong this build really is. And I find this build excels at two things. First, it's sheer power when it comes to ad clearing potential. With the amount of freezing and shattering you'll be causing, you can easily wipe out hordes of enemies. We'll bring things like the Duskfield Grenade and Aegir Scepter, giving us the ability to freeze numerous targets at a moment's notice. Plus, if you really need to, your super can easily wipe out waves of enemies and continuously damage any new enemies that spawn. And secondly, its ability to output high burst damage. We'll be taking aspects and fragments that will pair with our exotic to let us instantly reload and give us the ability to ramp up weapon damage to then ammo dump our rockets into a boss. So let's dive into the build and break down how it works. First up for our super, we only have one option for a stasis super and that's silence and squall. Though the fun thing about it is that it does decent boss DPS, but it also lasts 14 seconds and moves around towards enemies, making it a pretty decent option for ad clear. It's not going to stand up to something like blade barrage or celestial nighthawk, but it is a one and done super letting you get back to your damage with your weapons pretty quick. And for our first ability, we're taking marksman's dodge. I like to take marksman's dodge here, but honestly it doesn't matter because our exotic will replace our dodge with a shift that lets you travel 10 meters forward and makes you invisible for the duration of the shift and the shift lasts about one second so you're not really invulnerable for that long but the main thing that it does is actually give you four stacks of weapon surge which equates to 25 percent weapon damage and this surge counts for both arc and stasis weapons so we will be taking arc and stasis weapons with this build for our melee we only have one option which is withering blade but this shuriken is a good option and that's because it does two main things for us number one it slows targets on hits which will be important with our later fragments and number two it gives us two charges of it allowing us to use it more often which will also tie into a few of our fragments later for a grenade i like to go for the dust field grenade it has good synergy with our later fragments and cold snap could be an option but because it only freezes one target and then might spur off to another target it doesn't have the sheer freezing potential that dust field has and the same goes for the glacial grenade so dust field grenade is your best option here and that's because of our first aspect touch of winter which makes it so that our dust field grenade will not only have a bigger area of effect, but will also create a stasis crystal on impact. This crystal will help deal more damage, which can shatter and kill those targets in sight, but also it will pair into our fragments later, giving us back more grenade ability regeneration. And our second aspect is actually going to be Grim Harvest. I find that stasis subclasses really thrive when having as many fragments as possible. So we are going to take Grim Harvest because it does give us three extra slots for our fragments. Since we have easy ways to slow and freeze targets with our grenades, melee, and weapons, we will bring Grim Harvest to fully take advantage of those frozen targets so that now when you kill a frozen or slowed target they'll drop a stasis shard and this shard will give you back melee energy but it also pairs with our first fragment which is going to be whisper of rhyme and whisper of rhyme makes it so that when you pick up a stasis shard we're either granted health or overshield when we're at full health stasis subclasses can struggle a bit when it comes to survivability so this definitely helps and you do get increased damage resistance when you do have that stasis overshield as we mentioned when we kill a frozen or slowed target they will be dropping a stasis shard so our goal for this build is going to be to freeze and slow every target in sight so that we can drop as many shards as possible giving us back as much health as possible and in the process more melee energy and since that will be boosting our melee energy we'll take our second fragment whisper of shards and this is going to make it so that shattering a stasis crystal boosts your regeneration rate for your grenade by 500 for six seconds this really helps since your grenade creates a crystal in the middle on impact this means that as soon as you throw your grenade all you have to do is shatter that one crystal and you're already getting back more grenade energy plus this fragment is super strong this season with how easy it is to create crystals but we'll talk about that later when it comes to the seasonal artifacts 
section. For our third fragment, we will be taking Whisper of Fissures, so that shatter damage is increased in damage and size. We aim to cause a ton of shatter damage, so inherently this is going to be helpful to deal more damage to every target in sight. Since we get increased weapon damage with our class ability usage, we want to take advantage of our next fragment, Whisper of Refraction, so that when we kill a slowed or frozen enemy, we gain back class ability energy, depending on their rank. This really helps us keep up our weapon surge more often. Granted, when you do have your weapon surge, you can't gain back class ability energy, but as soon as that's over, we can still continuously freeze and slow targets. This will help get back our class ability back even quicker to use it again and proc that weapon surge. And finally, we're taking one of the best fragments for boss DPS, and that is Whisper of Impetus. This makes it so that damaging a target with your melee reloads all of your weapons and grants you increased handling. This does have a five second cooldown, so I usually like to use it to reload my rocket, shoot about two more rockets normally, and then use your melee again. Having two extra free reloads will save you time and help you ammo dump your rockets even quicker. All right, let's talk about ways to improve the build. First up for our stats. We are going for resilience and we're shooting for 100. As we mentioned, stasis can be a bit harder to stay alive on, so the extra resilience helps out a ton. And I love throwing my grenade as much as possible with this build, so I'm shooting for 100 discipline next. Getting back your dust skill grenade not only means more stasis shards to keep up your survivability, but it also creates a crystal in the middle, which will help boost your process even more. So throwing as many grenades as possible is definitely key. After that, you're looking for roughly 60 in mobility and strength. Both of these have a sweet spot when it comes to cooldown time, at around 50 to 60, so I like to aim for that. Recovery and intellect aren't really useful for this build, so you can pour a little bit into them if you have the extra stats, but moreover, go for those other four first. All right, for our armor mods, taking a look at our helmet. I like to take Harmonic Siphon and Arc Siphon. Harmonic Siphon makes it so that rapid kills with stasis weapons create orbs, and the same thing goes for our arc weapons too. I like to run both stasis and arc weapons with this build, since Mask of Bacchus will give us a times four surge for both our arc and stasis weapons. So being able to create orbs helps out a ton with our later mods. And that last slot, I usually like to take a heavy ammo finder, which is going to generate more heavy ammo bricks more often. If you are running Age or Scepter, then you do want to swap this out for a special ammo finder so you can have more special ammo because you'll likely be running a double special loadout. But if you're not running Age of Scepter and you're running something like a Stasis Primary instead, then heavy ammo is definitely key because you will be able to dump all of your ammo when it comes to boss phases. All right, taking a look at the gauntlet mods, we aim to use our grenade and class ability as much as possible. So I'm bringing bolstering dead nation to gain back 12% class ability energy when we deal grenade damage. We then also bring momentum transfer and focusing strike so that when we damage with our melee we gain back 12% ability energy with our grenade and class ability. Since we do have two melees we will be using them quite often so this will be helpful to get back a little bit more ability energy with our other abilities. All right moving on to the chest mods we will be taking the classic three resistance mods. Since we are in a stasis build you can't take the harmonic mod. Typically what I like to do is take one of each element, arc, solar, and void. When it comes to PVE content, most enemies will be dealing one of these three damage types. So I like to take all three just to have a flat 15% from basically all damage in the game. All right, taking a look at the leg mods. Mask of Bacchus overwrites any surge mods when we activate it. So I like to bring orb mods instead. First up, I like orb of restoration so that we gain 10% ability energy to our least charged ability. As we mentioned, we wanna be throwing our abilities as much as possible and they will start to feed into each other. So getting 10% back to our least charge is good to keep up all of our abilities. I like to then bring both recuperation and better already so we gain a boost of health and start health regeneration whenever we pick up an orb. We do have a way to get health back with shards, but I find having another way to start health regen and get a boost to it just keeps us a little bit healthier. Taking a look at the mark mods. Normally, I'd like to bring Bomber or Outreach for the bump of ability energy, but this time I'm going for something a little bit different. Since Stasis lacks a bit of survivability, I like to bring Healthy Finisher so that I can have a burst of health on a finisher ready to go whenever I need it. But if you are running double special, you can swap this out for a special finisher, which will drop special ammo whenever you do a finisher and you have three armor charge. Pick whichever one fits into your scenario. We will be using our class ability a ton to be able to activate our weapon surge, so I like to take both Reaper and Powerful Attraction so I can create more orbs and easily pick up any of the orbs that I've already created. Like I said, these orbs are going to not only start health regen, but it's also going to give us back more ability energy. When it comes to the artifact, this season isn't purely based on stasis, but there are a few mods that really amp up this build to the next level. The first one being Pillar of Ice, which spawns a crystal when defeating a frozen target. And this pairs perfectly with Whisper of Shards, allowing you to keep up that 500% grenade recharge rate just by killing all the targets that you're freezing. The second mod being Hail the Storm, which makes it so that frozen targets and crystals deal even more shatter damage. Plus Plus, when they're shattered, they send out shards of ice that deal damage and slow targets they hit. These two perks alone are super helpful for a build like this one. So taking a look at our weapons, first up for our kinetic slot. When it comes to weapons, we want to bring stasis and arc weapons for the increased damage. There are many ways to do that, so here are a few options that I like. 
The first option being Aegir Scepter. This weapon does decent damage, but mainly it freezes any targets around the target that you kill, which makes it perfect for a build like this since we want to defeat as many frozen targets as possible. But if you don't like to run double special, you could take something like the Virgos Curve, which is a stasis bow and it feels super strong with this build, which lets you freeze any target by hitting them, which is going to give you back more class ability energy and stasis shards. Or you can create crystals, which will increase your grenade regeneration. Alternatively, any stasis weapon with headstone is fantastic for this build giving you back more grenade energy and dealing more area damage. For the energy slot, I normally like to take an arc weapon here, since I can't take a stasis weapon. Indebted Kindness is one of the best options, since it does decent single target damage, and it can roll with Volt Shot for even more ad clearing potential. You could also take a Waveframe Grenade Launcher, like Forbearance or Undercurrent, for easy Crystal Shatter, and good ad clearing potential. Or if you need more boss damage, you can bring something like the Loaded Question, which is an arc fusion that can roll with Controlled Burst. And for the heavy slot, since we can bring either a stasis or arc heavy weapon, we have a ton of options. Cold Comfort and Crux Termination are both good legendary rocket launchers. They can output some high DPS. And with the new grenade launcher buff, the Windigo GL3 can be a good option for a mix of DPS and mini boss damage. But if you want to have a little bit more fun, Salvation's Grip is actually a ton of fun to use. And if you haven't used it recently, I highly recommend giving it a go. You can create a ton of crystals, which is going to give you back a ton of grenade energy. It's not necessarily the best for boss damage, but it's a ton of fun to use. Guardians, we've reached the end of our journey through the frozen plains of the Mask of Bacchus build. From slowing enemies, shattering crystals, and amping up your weapon damage, this build has proven its worth in PvE content. Remember, mastering these builds is only the beginning. Experiment with different combinations, tweak your loadouts to suit your playstyle, and never stop honing your skills. If you found this video helpful or just enjoyed seeing a new perspective, feel free to like the video and comment down below what you might change or how you'd improve the Mask of Bacchus build. Keep an eye out for future videos as we continue to explore the ever-evolving world of Destiny 2. Until then, may the threads of fate be ever in your favor. This is Lucky Mech, signing off. See you on the next Adventure Guardians.